Hey, Monroe Live fans, back here to you from at the ACT Expo. And today we've got Cody and Lydia with us from Harbinger, and they're gonna walk us through the EV rolling chassis. And then the one you really wanna hear about is the hybrid rolling chassis. But I wanna introduce, or I want Cody and Lydia to introduce themselves first. So ladies first, Lydia. Hi, I'm Lydia Hewitt. I'm vehicle systems engineer at Harbinger. Yeah, and hi, uh, my name's Cody Rabergan. Uh, I'm the manager of thermal engineering uh, here at Harbinger. All right, so where would you like to start? Uh, well, should we start at the front? Start at the front. Yeah, we can start at the front and we can maybe call out this nice little display we have here. So uh, this is an exhibit of our uh, steer by wire technology. Uh, this is in development for- Oh, here. Yeah, one, yeah. give it a go. Steer by wire. Oh, so it's gonna, the wheels are gonna move. Nice. So this We're is in there. development for our chassis right now. Um, it's not currently on the chassis. There's some challenges associated with this. Nice on uh, With the loads that we have for uh, a vehicle this heavy. Uh, it's not currently something on the market that can handle the loads for a medium duty commercial truck uh, on steer by wire, but uh, What would be a typical application for this rolling chassis here? Like typical application? Uh, think like step vans, uh, RVs, cab over chassis. Ah, like that step van in the background. Exactly, yeah, that's our main product right now is step vans. Does that say up to 500 miles for any application? Yes, and that's uh, that's all thanks to our uh, range extender that we just announced yesterday. Oh, oh with, the, with the hybrid? The hybrid, yeah, ah, okay. series hybrid. Yeah, so our, our main focus for the past three years has been just strictly EVs. Uh, there's been some demand for uh, higher range applications, which the best way to get that is to implement the series hybrid. Yeah. yeah. So this is our smallest wheelbase. This is a 158 full EV chassis. Um, so you can have four or five battery packs in this one. Uh, we're getting about a mile per kilowatt hour um, out of this system at the minute. Um, so this one's got four, uh, five packs. So there's one at the back, two, three, and then there's two stacks at the front. So that's uh, 175 miles of range you'd get off this bad boy. And the interesting thing about the battery pack configuration is that we run an 800 volt system uh, and each one of these battery packs are 800 volts. So technically each battery pack that you add is just added kilowatt hours to the total of the vehicle. So we can run on as little as three battery packs and we can go all the way up to six. So customers can specify how much range that they want. Uh, we're not limited by one battery pack. You can just add range since they're all in parallel. Yeah, We could also sell you a four pack and provision for a fifth at the point of purchase and you can add an extra battery pack later if that's something you wanted to do. Yep. And what's the battery format? Is it cylindrical and yeah, twenty one seventy cylindrical 2170s? cells. Yeah, pretty standard. Yep, and safe, reliable, very yep. safe, and easy very to reliable. get. Yep, easy to get. And we manufacture the battery packs uh, at our facility in Garden Grove. Yeah, so we buy the cells and we get manufacturers for obviously the enclosures and the cold plates, but yeah. we put everything together at our facility in Garden Grove. Um, so the, we have a production line for these for these packs. So made in America. Made in exactly. America. Exactly. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Yes. What are the other highlights? Uh, uh, one that we that kind of missed on the about. front is uh, one that's pretty unique for the suspension geometry. Typically, what you see on uh, commercial vehicles and strip chassis like this is leaf spring suspension on the front yeah. with a solid axle. Uh, we have independent front suspension with uh, kind of two A arms. Uh, that allows two things, uh, much better ride quality yeah. and also much more improved steering angle input. So our turning radius is way less than a comparable like ice vehicle. Yeah, we have a, a 55 degree wheel cut, so very maneuverable. Nice. And I think you saw that Small in the, in the demo on, yeah. The, yeah. on the thing. Yes, impressive. Uh, maybe we can go around to the other side and get into my domain, which is thermal systems. Um, due to packaging space on the front here, uh, you can see we have two radiators, two cooling modules on either side. Uh, this was limited, or this was, architecture was chosen based on front end packaging. Um, we wanted to limit the length of our chassis to give upfitters, since we sell the strip chassis and upfitters will put whatever they want on top. 
whether that be an RV, a box truck, uh, a step van. Uh, we wanted to allow them to package whatever they want without making the vehicle longer. So that's why we split our cooling modules and put them off to the side to make everything shorter. Uh, and then moving on a little further, um, this, is our, this is our thermal box. Uh, this is what handles all of our uh, thermal controls. Inside we have a couple pumps, uh, a bunch of different mode valves, uh, a lot of refrigerant components. Uh, so this thing controls how we cool our drive unit, how we cool our batteries, how we heat or cool our cabin. Um, we have a bunch of different modes that we can operate in. You can cool the batteries separate from the drive unit. You can cool them all together. Uh, you can cool them using refrigerant or you can cool them using ambient air from the radiators in the front. Uh, so this is kind of like the brains of the, of the thermal system. And I see the quick connects, nice O-ring uh, quick yeah, connects. Yeah, that's for basically manufacturing and serviceability. You can pop them on and off. You can drop the box, uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, so this is a motor drive unit. Um, it's a high voltage junction box. So that's just taking energy from the batteries, distributing it to where it needs to go. Uh, there's an inverter. Uh, sitting up there in the middle. Um, very power dense motor. Uh, we're around 440 horsepower. Uh, the motor itself is 1,550 Newton meters of torque. There's a 12 to one gear reduction to the wheels. So that's about 18,000 Newton meters at the wheels. And this is our proprietary design. We manufacture this in house as well. Ah, your Although motor, you make the motor. We do. Yep. Yeah, we actually just uh, commissioned our uh, motor manufacturing line uh, at our facility in Garden Grove uh, this past month. So we're making our, our motor and we assemble the whole drive unit uh, at our facility as well. So we kind of have three production lines at the facility, one for battery, one for motor drive unit, and then our general assembly where we put all of this together. Is that the same motor that's there? Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah if you want to close up. Yeah. Yeah, so here you kind of see a few different things. This is the, the motor drive unit that you would see in, in the chassis, uh, just the complete unit. Uh, we have our gears right here. So this is where we're uh, input shaft from the uh, motor, intermediate shaft, and then our, our diff and our, our final drive right there. Uh, and this is a neat little way to see everything working together. Yeah, you can spin that. Turn in the crank. Yeah. I do like this model. Yeah, so we have a, a direct oil cooled motor. Uh, we have an oil pump right here, liquid to liquid heat exchanger. That pumps oil up into all of these channels up in here. Uh, and that jets oil down onto the hairpins of the motor itself. Cooling them, you get good coverage of, of oil, good wetting, good, uh, good cooling. Um, that oil then flows downwards over into the sump where it's taken by the gears and sloshed around for lubrication and cooling of all your bearings and, and gears. So yeah, this is a, a quick look at what the inside of our battery pack looks like. So yeah, we'll fit three, four, five or six of these to a vehicle all connected in parallel. This is each one of these 800 volts and about 35 kilowatt hours of capacity per pack. Yeah, and each pack, each um, each pack has its own. This is all the high voltage disconnect unit. So there's contactors, uh, fuses, all sorts of stuff. That's how we shut the pack off from the rest of the vehicle. Is that uh, orange contraption there? Yeah. So if you had a fault with one pack, for example, you can still keep going. All the other packs will still keep operating as normal. Yeah. You can just disconnect one. So on the surface. Looks the same, looks the same, same, same. Yeah, so at same. that end, it's all going to look very, very similar. Uh, but the biggest change is going to be here at the rear. This is our range extender unit. So this is a four cylinder, 1.4 litre engine that's connected in series with the rest of our propulsion system. So what this does is it uh, charges the batteries either whilst you're driving or also when you're stationary. Uh, this is a 47 and a half gallon tank as well. Diesel or yes. gas? Gas. gas. Gas, so standard gas, any pump, I think 87 octane. 
And that and that all the engine does is run a generator. Yep. Yeah, all it does is it's batteries. charging Range your batteries. Extent. Yeah, it's not connected to the wheels in any way. So it's just charging your batteries. Um, so with this, we can get up to 500 miles of range. So what this does is it goes in place of one of our battery packs. So this is on our 178 wheelbase. Mm -hmm. So we've got four packs up there already. So one, two, and then the double stack. In the 208, it's a bit longer and we can still fit another one in. But that's how we've managed to keep the rest of the chassis the same. It's taking it, that space between the frame rails. And is that based on some feedback you've gotten that there's some customers that want that kind of range? Yeah. That's a long way. And I think also that there's people get anxious. You know, it's a, t it's a tough transition yeah. from combustion to electric. And this, I think, gives people a, that bit of psychological safety. Yeah. And and you, I think, okay. you said you this is uh, could be used for a motorhome. Yeah, yeah, so that's one of the. Right. So that maybe is. Yeah, that's a big that driving customer. factor for it. Is like typically EVs are best in the city where you're doing a lot of right. low speed start stops, but um, yeah, RV use cases are more highway driving to get to your campsite. You're using a lot more energy because you're yeah. either going up hills, you're driving at higher speeds. So a big driver for that is that's that's a big driver for this. Yeah, and we can run this at a really low rate to just keep that charge maintaining whilst you're not traveling anywhere. So it's not going to be disruptive in a campground. And Another thing that a uh, use case that we've seen for it is a lot of um, delivery fleets fleets are moving to EVs, but they don't necessarily have the charge infrastructure in place at their depots to charge all of their trucks at the same time. Mm -hmm. So in the meantime, you might be able to use a range, a couple range extended trucks to relieve the the charge infrastructure load. Um, yeah. So you're not charging all of your trucks every day. You can do it every other day or maybe every third day, depending on your use cases. And then yeah. just back for the RV side, what we've got here, this is our high voltage out. So you can basically run the whole house of this. You don't need like additional battery packs. You don't need an additional generator. Oh, yeah. So you're saving a lot of complexity in that RV system. So you it's can all... stay parked for a while. Yes. A week or two and, and roll off of uh, the range extending motor. Yeah, exactly. You're not going anywhere, but you're consuming power while you're parked there. Yeah. yeah. And then I think the last thing is our uh, DC fast charger. This is a new product that we're in development with. Um, so this is a, a DC DC converter. We'll be able to take um, energy from our truck and run it through this to charge another vehicle. This is kind of like a, a service solution. if. There's a vehicle that's on the road that's run out of charge. We can charge 10 miles in 10 minutes or something like that. Like, uh, like an EV jump start, yep. enough to get it to like a proper charging station. You don't have to wait to be towed. Oh, that's cool. So maybe if somebody's got a fleet, they have one or two of these that could go out this and you would mount this somewhere on the truck. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And this is obviously one of our battery packs. You could either connect it directly to our battery system or you could mount an auxiliary pack yeah. and run off that if you wanted to mount it to a nice vehicle, for example. And that's where I can't imagine a customer out there that just peace of mind, right? Let's yeah, let's have one truck set up with the uh, the you can go charge somebody remotely to uh, to get back to charging. Ah, oh, that's a great idea. Very thoughtful. A lot of innovation. Yeah. I think that's... Uh, that's Any other highlights that. today? We covered a lot. But yeah, I think, I think we, we covered a lot. I think yeah. we touched on all the points that uh, that I wanted to touch on. So. And you've got a busy booth here. So I don't want to take you away from uh, potential customers any longer. Lydia, thank you. Thank you. All right. And Cody. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. We appreciate it.